Hello and welcome back to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. My name is Todd and what I have here is an Alpine MRD M1000 that uh, came in with uh, some Maxonics amplifiers from a customer. And I originally uh, had this uh, tell tested. It tested good on the bench and so, so I threw it on the load test bench and it played for oh an hour plus and I walked over to it and I literally just touched it while it was running and it instantly went into uh, drew a whole ton of current and uh, tripped the breaker that it was on so uh, so I was like oh well that's interesting there's that told me right off the bat there there's something loose in this board so uh, what I'd like to point out in class D circuits you have output inductors and these output inductors take your high frequency switching and well it smooths it out for you so I'm not sure you can't quite so there's two speaker terminals right let me see if I can move this board here a little bit for you there we go so there's two speaker terminals here it's a it's a mono channel board oh no oh, hold on let me take that back it yes it's a mono channel board so this terminal here goes to this inductor and this terminal goes to this inductor i have a 50 hertz signal uh on the input here i have the amplifier hooked up to my two amp power supply and yep you can fire up a big 1000 watt class d board on two amps so this is a really cool board as i pointed out this mrd 1000 it's got a really interesting uh interface on the front you can go through and you can adjust everything about this amplifier electronically but uh, what i'd like to point out is let's see here let me get uh, the board fired up here real quick and just to make sure that I'm not showing any overcurrent shorts. All right. Oh, here. Oh, hold on guys. Let me give me two seconds here and let me fire up my uh, scope software so you guys can see what's going on here. So let me find the scope here. Search. Select. Fire up the scope. All right. All right, let me uh, change views here. It's got the scope on it here. All right, so here's the two output inductors. And here's the scope. So here's my 50 hertz signal. Looks nice and clean. Just like, uh, just like an Alpine should be. Nice, clean, 50 hertz sine wave on that. Um, so what I was doing is I was like, oh man, what could be going wrong? I, the, uh, the drive chip here does get warm, but this is one of those chips that have the heat sink underneath. Um, so it's going to, it's going to get warm. So I was just waiting for the amp to heat up and like nothing was happening. So I know it wasn't really temperature based. So I don't have faulty output transistors based on temperature or ICs based on temperature. Because it got up to just an uh, average of 108 degrees uh, at about 25% volume. But I just was slowly heating it up. So then I took it back over to the bench, pulled it back off the amplifier, and started probing around on this. And what I do is I will physically, without putting my fingers in here, because you don't want to get crossed up in this voltage, um, is I will grab that inductor and I'll twist and turn. And you'll see that scope sits nice and still. The sine wave stays steady. So I came over to this inductor. And I just want you to pay attention right here. I'm just going to touch one winding of this. Maybe. Oh, and there it is. Ah. Ah. 
So there's the short. There's an inductor short here. So if you look at the sine waves, it's a nice clean 50 hertz sine wave. And then when it's shorted, it goes basically into full on clipping, uh, which drew just a ton of current when that happens. And now I'm trying to get the, there we go. So there's a spot in this inductor that is shorted. So I can place it back in place here and the uh, sine wave here is fine, but you can move it around. I'm trying to kind of pinpoint where the short is. Oh, uh, back. Got to be careful I don't overheat any transistors or anything. So I can just touch the wire that's coming across the top of this inductor here. Oh, and it does feel like it's on this side. I think that short is going to be right, right down in this corner right here. There it is. So if I touch right here, there it is. So there's a short, shorted winding on the inductor. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off before I don't want to cook any transistors, but I just wanted to show you that this is a kind of a common issue with class D boards is the output inductors and it's just not that it's also power supply uh, tr transformers uh, as you can see this power supply uses that the cord transformers here which they're really solid built but transformers that use the wraps around the, uh, the core well those windings will show you know they can short out under vib high vibration conditions so Somewhere in here, I have a shorted uh, inductor, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to pull the inductor and check. What I'll do is I'll check it underneath to make sure the solder joint is still good. So sometimes they do work free; they start to short in the board, um, and these are spaced out far enough to where I probably wouldn't suspect to have shorts in between the windings because the windings are actually spaced out pretty far. So I'm gonna bet it's a solder joint issue because this does move around pretty good. And it's about here I'd like to point out that the uh, output inductors, both inductors, the solder joints were bad. So that was correct, a bad solder joint. Uh, so yeah, so that'll be the problem for this MRD-1000. So uh, just a little tip there on uh, output inductors. So if you like this kind of content, uh, please like and subscribe down below there. I will try to release videos as much as possible. I've been getting pretty busy lately. Um, I guess there's some repair techs out there that uh, are no longer repairing boards. So I've been getting a lot of uh, referrals coming back to me here. So. I've been pretty busy. So stay tuned. I'll be out with another one. Thanks for watching.